This phonograph toy was made in 1960. This Victrola was made in 1970. At the Mechanical Music Extravaganza, you can learn everything about antique phonograph. This is an Edison standard, a two-minute, you know, machine. And this machine is about 1905. This is an Edison gem. The gem was the smallest of the Edison machines made. And uh, it, it was made, this particular one is about 1903. In 1877, Thomas Edison invented the phonograph. Phonograph cylinders were the earliest commercial medium for recording and reproducing sound. Audio recording was engraved on the outside surface of cylinders. It is reproduced when played on a phonograph. At the beginning of the 20th century, the competing disc record system triumphed over cylinders and dominated the market. And you'll see this is a, it's called Deep Henderson by King Oliver and his Dixie syncopators. And this was recorded in April of 1926 in Chicago. And these are the musicians. King Oliver was considered to make the first black jazz record. Taking it over and the ritual of putting it on the turntable, getting it to play, putting it in the groove, you only have three minutes. You can't go and uh, make a sandwich. So this focusing helps you understand the music, makes you come to the music and come to the experience. In the early 20th century, Thomas Edison sold the phonograph and he had that name trademarked. The American graphophone people who sold through Columbia Graph Graphophone Company used the word graphophone, phonograph reversed. Victor Talking Machine Company used the word talking machine. Now Victor came out of Berliner Gramophone Company. The Grammy Award comes from the word gramophone. Nowadays, there are still some people who play gramophone. Gramophone DJ Mac is often invited to play his gramophone at weddings and parties. This is Mac in the costume playing for an adventurous event. And we're not usually costumed like that. But when we go to events, we are dressed in 1920s clothes. Always in a very nice suit or a 1920s tuxedo. I grew up during a time when records were the way that people listened to music. These records are recorded in one take with a band all in the room, direct to disc recording. And the technology makes it so there's not a lot of high end, there's not a lot of treble, there's not a lot of bass. It's all mids because that was the technology. It's acoustic technology. No electricity is used for the recording or playback process. Press the button. There it is. And we can actually have it run now. This is the barrel that contains the springs, and this is the main bull gear, it's called. I think just the simplicity and the beauty of it and the direct way we can identify it and see how it works almost is more fascinating to our minds than something like an iPhone, which you look at it and you know it works, but you have no idea how it works. It's coming out there. It's a lost area of our music and history it's a little bit hidden. You have to get it out there. It's not so easy. And uh, I'm very grateful that I'm the guy that's helping people know more about this and to be able to share it with them. We started this show in May of 1999. And today is, today is show number 38. I like to play records on the original machines. And what, when I was a kid, let's go back to 1964, was the idea of the sound coming out of this, out of a horn or out of this box, you know, in a way that it didn't with, say, a modern, you know, a regular record player of the era, with speakers and all that. It's, you know, it's very interesting sound, and it's something it's very captivating. So I collect for a lot of different reasons because I like the machinery and I like the old music. I play play Dixieland jazz. You know, it's just stuff you like. I'm the I'm the wood horn man of the world. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Joan, my wife, got me collecting in, in uh, photographs. When I was two years old, 
my uncle brought this Victrola to our home. And my mother said, I'll put it up in the baby's room. That was me. And every time I opened the lid, I saw this little dog looking into the photograph. So, of course, as time went on, they said, would you like the photograph? And I said, yes, and you need it repair. My husband repaired it, and thus began our hobby in the photograph collecting area. I got fascinated with the technology of the mechanical way in which music was recreated and how, uh, how everything evolved without electricity for about 50 years. So it, just a fascinating just a fascinating hobby and, and, and uh, enjoyable music. Well, Personally, I don't think the new music sounds as good. It's too refined. It doesn't have those little cracks and things that yeah. that old music did. Yeah, there's good music and bad music, but but it's not by genre or time. Yes, right, right now there's great music being made all over the place right now, and there was a hundred years ago. And there was bad music being made, but even bad music's good, yeah? Because it's um, music. When it's in the air, it's gone. Exactly. Oh, you should put that in. Way down on the levee, in Flower Manor, sat down in Manor, and in London, and it's on a moon.